Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is World Diabetes Day, so I really wanted to dedicate a special video to my diabetic and keto friends out there. So, I tried to do as much research as possible on diabetic and keto friendly foods so I altered my Snickers pie recipe to be keto and diabetic friendly so I left the recipe in the beginning hopefully it's good and then this is keto pasta well the pasta noodles are not keto I could not for the life of me find any keto noodles or diabetic friendly noodles near me. I just used regular macaroni elbows that needed to be used up. Um, but the sauce itself is keto and diabetic friendly so I will write the recipe for this in the description box below. And then you can just use a keto pasta. And then also for today I will be reading and reacting to more of your scary stories. I'm sorry it's taking me so long to get to them but we're finally here but first i'm going to start with these snickers pie because i'm just so excited to see if this is good so this chocolate portion was supposed to be like drizzly but it ended up reacting weird with the i think it was the chocolate and the maple syrup but it hardened so I had to flatten it out and then put it on top it should still be good though also I've heard mixed things about peanuts being keto and diabetic friendly but I know that peanut butter is but I heard that peanuts weren't which doesn't really make sense so I hope that this everything in here is keto and diabetic friendly to my knowledge it is, but it's I've heard mixed things about different ingredients, so. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. Okay. I was really nervous about the crust, but it's actually so good. Mmm. It's really soft and it has a really good flavor too. And of course, the caramel on the inside is really good as well. I don't like it as much as the non-keto version because that one uses Oreos for the crust. So of course, it's going to be more rich and decadent. But I still really like this one. Like, it's really, really good.
So I'm going to start on the scary story times now. This first one is from a nuke. To celebrate my graduation, my mom and I went to Prague for a couple of days. The first day we arrived, it was already pretty late, but we still wanted to explore. So we decided to hike up the Petron Hill to get to this awesome tower to have an amazing view of the whole city. When we arrived on top, we were just in time to go up the tower before it closed and the sun started to set. After some time, we decided to head back down. Nobody else was around anymore and it was pitch black at this point. After some time of walking, we started hearing some rustling between the bushes and trees, but thought nothing of it. Probably just squirrels or something. But then, out of the blue, this man jumped out of the dark onto the paved road. I was so startled and frozen in fear. I looked at my mom in complete shock and she just took my hand and we started booking it down the road as fast as we could whilst my mom screamed, fire, fire, help. Yes, if you are in a serious situation, you want to yell pretty much anything to get anybody's attention, so that was smart. I think it worked because luckily nothing happened and we made it safe down. I'm so glad I was with my mom because I would have just been frozen in fear without her. <laughs> Me too. It's been over five years now since that happened, but it was definitely one of the more scary encounters, which still affects me in how vigilant, vigilant I am at night. If I had something like that happen to me, I would be the same way. And I am anyway. Like, I used to go on walks very, very frequently, and I still go on walks, but I used to go pretty far by myself, and it was dark, and I just wasn't careful. But now, I kind of have matured a little bit more, and understand that how dangerous it can be and so I make sure that I'm always vigilant and careful and cautious and making sure to always look behind me and all of that so yeah thank you for sharing your story Anouk I'm glad you guys were okay and that nothing happened he was probably on something I'm really proud of how soft and tasty this crust is. Sometimes I think about what I would do in situations like that and I honestly don't know like I say that I would probably run away or be frozen in fear but in reality actually being in a situation like that I don't know what I would do I feel like I might do something different than what I'd expect it's very interesting what your body and your mind will do in a state of fear or panic
Okay, this pie is so good and I want to keep eating it, but I have to try some of this first. I'm very excited though. So the sauce is made with tofu, which is one of my favorite ways to make sauces, especially because it adds extra protein. It's pretty good. Not the best pasta sauce that I've made, but it's definitely super creamy. I think I would add more nutritional yeast and onion and garlic powder. Okay, so this next one, she doesn't want me to use her name, so I'm just going to call her Liza. She said, I was walking home from school, and I was around 12 to 13 at the time. I grew up in a very small town, which only had two secondary schools, which is a UK term for high schools. In the weeks leading up to this incident, emails were sent out to parents warning them of taxis waiting outside of school to pick up children that were not permitted to be at the school. In the UK, 99% of children and teens walk to and from school, even if that's a 45 to one, 45 minute to one hour walk. We all tend to walk. So the taxis were for children that lived in nearby towns that were too far away to walk. Because so few taxis were needed, the school knew every taxi that would come to it, so if there were new dodgy ones, they knew about it. Knowing that these bad taxi guys were around, I was very careful walking home. One day, I had to walk home alone. I was about 10 minutes from home. It was dark outside when I saw a van drive past me. Slow down as he drove past and stared at me and carried on driving, but very, very slow. I instantly felt like something was wrong, so I slowed my walking down to see what the van now ahead of me would do. The van started driving slower and slower, so I was so close to catching up to him. I knew this was bad, so I stopped dead walking, just stood still. The moment I did that, the van stopped, and I knew I was in trouble. I turned around and bolted as fast as I could away from him. Looking behind me, I could see the van had now turned around and was following me again. I turned into a nearby alleyway and ran as fast as I could until I reached a friend's house. I waited there for maybe 15 minutes until I felt safe enough to run all the way home. I never saw the van again and I always made sure to walk home with others. I never walked home alone again. I have no idea if the van has anything to do with the weird fake taxis, but it seems odd to me that this happened around the same time of the taxi thing and that was when that was going on. That's definitely terrifying. Like I've mentioned before, ghosts have excuses. Humans do not. They are absolutely terrifying and honestly more creepy to me than ghosts and spirits because ghosts and spirits, most of them just want you to recognize them and they just want attention. I just, I don't like people. <sighs> Oh 
Okay. I like people, but I don't like a lot of people out there. I know we're all going through things, but that gives you no excuse to be creepy and rude and disrespectful. There's no excuse. This actually gets better as you eat it. So those are the, actually the only two stories I'm going to read in this video, just because I want to keep it shorter. But if you guys have any scary stories that you want to share, you can comment them down below or DM me. And like I always say, let me know if you want me to use your name or not, because like Liza, she didn't want me to use her actual name. So just let me know. I'm actually gonna have a little bit more of that because I'm starting to get a little full but I want to finish off with the pie but I still want a little bit more of this Also, I promise lasagna is coming soon.
I keep meaning to get around to it, but other videos keep coming up. So, I promise it's in the plans. I really hope I don't have food all over my face. <laughs> You'd tell me, right? So I used almond flour for the crust and typically I gravitate toward oat flour if I'm going to use a gluten free flour but I'm starting to become more fond of almond flour. It has a really nice flavor and texture. Oat flour is still my favorite but I really like this crust. The flavor of the almond flour is coming through and I like it a lot. Also, I don't think oat flour is keto or diabetic friendly. Because it's higher in carbs. I really hope you guys try this out and that you like it and I really really hope that it is keto and diabetic friendly. I'm pretty sure it is like I mentioned before but there's always mixed opinions on things that are keto. Now being diabetic friendly that's more specific. I'm pretty sure.
So just let me know. My friend's mom is diabetic, so I'm trying to work on more recipes suitable for her. It's perfect because I can share them with you guys too. Keyword trying. Okay. <clears throat> this is going to be my last bite. All right, you guys, that is the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoy the recipes and I hope that they work out for you guys. They were very good and it was fun to test new things out and challenge myself. So hopefully more to come. Thank you guys for sending me your scary stories. And like I said, if you want yours in a future video, comment or dm me and i'll try to get to it as soon as i can make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and if you want to see more and don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye guys